Folks, how you doing? It's your main man, Uber Guy, and I'm back with another weekly hit show, The Actors Cut, and I got a very special show going on right now. I got two great guests right here that's really involved with the community, really involved with some big things, and I'm not gonna give it away because I really want them to introduce themselves and really give you uh, uh, an in-depth look at you know what they do and you know some of the things that we got that we have coming up, which I'm very honored to be a part of. So um, with no further ado, my friend, Mr. Bob McCullough Jr., yep, yep. Mr. Daryl Neverson. Pleasure, pleasure. I'm very yeah. very honored and privileged to have you guys down here um, with the Each One Teach One program. And I, I'm not even gonna. I'm, Bob, please go ahead and explain, well, you know, what Each One Teach One is and the, the history of it. First off, Hubert, thank you so much for having us uh, on the show because, you know, we're really excited because this is the 50th anniversary of the Each One Teach One program. The National Association of Each One Teach One is what it's involved in, evolved into. However, when Each One Teach One first started, it was the product of what you would consider after-school programming. Uh, really, it was born out of four of the guys who are the patriarchs of the New York City Parks and Recreation, uh, you know, history and foundation. They are uh, Pelham Fritz, Donald Adams, Ali Edinburgh, and Holcomb L. Rucker. So those are the guys that really took uh, shirts and skins to the beginning. Right. Uh, they were the park guys that said, hey, we have this whole park. Let's create something where kids can actually come and play and spend time, stay off the streets. And ultimately, my dad was a, the beneficiary of the, a lot of that. And uh, from the tots all the way on up to the pros, he was someone who played basketball behind Rucker and all, wind up going to Heron High School, Benedict College, then being drafted um, into the NBA. Uh, and so his, his, you know, his life changed from somebody who was eligible to go to jail because of his activities and now somebody who's eligible to play in the NBA. With the big O. And it was deep, <laughs> yes. He got drafted With to the, the big He got drafted to the Cincinnati Royals, uh -huh. which I I, I, I say now is like <laughs> yo, it's like LeBron team and Kyrie Irving gets drafted to him because Bob McCullough Senior, he averaged thirty six point four points per game in college. Yeah. He was the second leading scorer in the nation behind Rick Barry. And so if you look at the days and times, if that was today, he would have got drafted high. Mm -hmm. You know, but they weren't, there were very few black ball players in the system, there were maybe two on a team. Uh, he got into a situation uh, during training camp, uh, and it was a challenge whether to keep him or not keep him, but he was doing a lot of different things that guys talk about. Uh, and him and Oscar kind of rubbed heads the wrong way, and. The rest went south, but he decided to, instead of continuing to pursue a career, to now start the Rucker Pro Tournament. And the Rucker Pro Tournament was started because Holcomb Rucker died mm -hmm. in 1965. Yeah. So when he died, you know, he was like, you know, Rucker would never get a chance to see me play pro ball. But there were hundreds of guys who played in the league, uh, who wanted to play in the league, but who were in colleges that Rucker had actually sent to colleges. Mm -hmm. He had sent almost 700 guys into colleges before um, he passed. And so these were the, the HBCUs and different schools that, you know, guys come back and attest to it. You know, eight-time champion Tom Satch Sanders uh, accredits the times he was in the summertime. After he won the championships with the Celtics, he would come and sit at Rucker's feet and just listen to Rucker talk. Mm -hmm. And so that was really one of the things that um, it was all about. It was about community. It was about the nurturing of the, the black men and women in Harlem because there were girls who played and that's not often talked about. Mm -hmm. So we became, you know, we became filmmakers. Daryl and I met a chance meeting on the elevator uh, <laughs> in the building, in the building where my mom lives and, and you know, the rest was history. Right. But we were trying to really talk about the history of this. So oh, from all of that, you wonder why I'm talking about Rucker when we hear for each one teach one. Well, what Rucker did was from the tots all the way up to the pros. Mm -hmm. Wilt Chamberlain played, Connie Hawkins played, Jumpin' Jackie Jackson played, all these guys played, Tiny Archibald played, um, Pee Wee Kirkland, Joe Hammond, mm -hmm. all these guys played on the different levels in what Rucker had created. So when Rucker died, those other three guys <clears throat> that were the patriarchs 
went and started another Holcomb L. Rucker Community League where they dealt directly with the kids and they didn't want to do the pros. You know, as our age, we playing right. basketball, the guys right. getting their beef in, <laughs> they want to get right. their gun and do all that stuff. Right. They was like, look, we're not dealing with these older right. guys. Mm -hmm. But Bob McCullough and Fred Crawford Sr., they said, look, we're going to continue. Fred was already in the NBA. He played for the Lakers, the Bucks, the Knicks, and the Sixers. Mm -hmm. And so he was talking to guys while he was on the road, you know, bringing guys to come and play in the tournament. And really, you know, the result is a league where the streetball legends are the guys that played against the pros. The 1970 New York Knicks team that won the championship didn't win the championship in Rucker. And they had Willis, they had uh, Walt Frazier, they had uh, Senator Bill Bradley, mm. they had, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Howie Colmize, Fred mm -hmm. Croft, they had a crew. Right. And so ultimately, when you look at that, there's competition. So, right. you know, that's at the forefront of the, the dy dynamics of the league changing. But they also wanted to do something for the kids. Mm -hmm. So two years later, they basically took uh, – some of the pros that they had. And I believe that the Rucker and each one teach one at the forefront of clinics. See, now clinics are regular. The guys that have a team are regular. And they take, um, you know, a, a, a great deal of pride in doing these clinics. But before, nobody was doing clinics. Mm -hmm. So they did clinics. Tiny Archibald was the head of, you know, Tiny Archibald and Dean, Dean Memager, um, God rest his soul. He was the one, these were the two guys that coordinated each one teach one. Right. They also had Bobby Hunter, they had Ron Jackson, guys from the whole, whole the, the Globetrotters who would, you know, participate and, and make time for the kids. Right. So they started the each one teach one program, started their own 501c3, 1967, and here we are, 50 right. years later. And, and, and you know, it's, it's so... Like with the with the start of this, this was all you know. Like I watched the Rucker Fifty. You got to watch the Rucker Fifty documentary on Netflix. It's ridiculous. It, I mean, it is it, you know with the the different people that they have in there, you know, doing testimonies and the different footage that you see. And I was oh man, it was, uh, you you have to watch this. And it was at a time too when social change was really taken about. It was really given athletes, black athletes, that platform right. to be able to speak, you know, um, like, uh, um, Dr., hold on, I, I, I had to do my notes because there's so much information and I didn't want to get anything wrong, uh, like Dr. Jamal Joseph, mm -hmm. um, yep. professor at Columbia University, founder of Impact Theater and Panther 21, you know, how, you know, the really the black revolution and everything just, you know, was really impacted and it really, Rucker was not only about basketball, but it was about social change. It was about culture. It was about music, entertainment. It was about our our whole community. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. Yeah. give me your thoughts, man, because I, I love, man, th this is, you know, this is, and I'm, and I'm very excited about, you know, the event that we have coming up in August. Yeah. I'm going to be doing a lot of things for the community, and it, what the day's August August 10th, August through the 10th, 13th. 10th through the 13th. But, but D was, the, and he'll talk more about it, he's mm -hmm. the catalyst for a lot of this, you know. Right. We, uh, we were in the process of doing a completely different Rucker catalog because there's stories for decades. There's really, each guy that's in there has a different story. There's guys you don't know about. Their stories are more dynamic even about than some of the guys you heard about. But D was like, yeah, we got to do a 50th anniversary. We can't, we wasn't going to do no more Rucker films. You, and you know what? <laughs> I, I, and I didn't even know there was like so many people involved. I had heard of the Rucker, but I didn't know. And then a lot of women got their start there too. Like Nancy Lieberman. Yes. A lot of, lot of women, you yeah, know what I'm saying, yeah. that came and, and held the game down, yes. you know what yes. I'm saying, yeah. and that really accredited everyone, too, with, you know, being able, w with where they are now, yeah. you know, from the Rucker. Yeah. Man, so, uh, so, I, so, I, so, so elaborate. T talk to us. <laughs> you know, talking about those days in the 60s and, and, and when all of this started, it's, it was a time where in our community was, we were losing leaders, you know. Malcolm X died 65, Holcomb Rucker died 65, Dr. King died 68. Um, so it was a tumultuous time, but you know, through this, they created Each One Teach One, they created the Rucker, and, and it empowered the community. One of the biggest things about the Rucker, that two of the biggest things that people don't really understand is that it was a place where you could see pros play for free. 
Like, you know, most people in our community couldn't afford to go down, you know, the Madison Square right. Garden mm-hmm. and see the games. Right. And two, it was the only place where, you know, in those days you had you had several other leagues. You had the um, ABA and you had the Eastern League and you had the NBA. So in the Rucker was the only place that all of these individuals that were pros could play against each other at one time. Because, mm-hmm. you know, at, at the NBA didn't play against the ABA and the Eastern League players didn't play against things. So, you know, we had everybody. Mm-hmm. We had the top guys from the Eastern League. We had the top guy. Well, not we. I wasn't even allowed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. He can say we had everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and these Speaking guys. Speaking vicariously. Right. <laughs> so, and they came back to each one. Teach one. A lot of them came back and done did the clinics. We have video footage that we're going to be showing, you know, of some of these gentlemen coming back and talking to the kids right. and being in the community. So, you know, it, it's all about community. Yes. It's all about empowering the people, empowering the kids. You know, each one teach one is, is they use sports as a, as, a, as a mechanism to encourage kids to get good grades, to stay in school, to mentor kids, to teach them teamwork, to teach them how to work and communicate with individuals. And, you know, that's some of the most important work out right. of the whole Rucker program. Definitely. Like each one teach one. You know, and, and it's interesting because um, I just I, came, I went to Senegal last August and I, I was on the plane with some players and I was talking to the coach and I was like, yeah, you know, we're doing this Rucker Park thing, boom, boom, boom. And he was like, oh, okay, okay. And I was like, and we're also doing this Each One Teach One. He's like, Each One Teach One. Like, right. you know, it's <laughs> almost like, you know, this this name resonates right. with people because it's it's not just basketball, it's community. Right. You know, it's education. It's like love, a shelter, you know. <laughs> We talked about some of the females that played there. You know, we have an interview with a young lady who, who said she was actually raped. And, and the only way she got through rape, or being raped or being a victim, was playing basketball. Coming to Rucker Park, dealing with Bob's dad, open arms. She was like, you know, after that event happened, she didn't even know how to deal with a man or males, anything. But Bob's father, un, un, he didn't even know it, but, you know, with him just teaching, treating everybody the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, she came there and it helped her. It helped her deal and cope with this 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 situation so right. you know it's powerful powerful it's, it's powerful very it's very powerful. very and, powerful and you know us as filmmakers and producers like we're producing the event and we're also producing films to kind of you know tell these stories mm-hmm. because they need to be told right right yeah. right right and and like i said check it out on Netflix, the documentary Rucker 50. And I, you know, what? when I'm watching all the old school footage and I'm seeing all the legends play, it's like uh, people were sitting on top of the buildings. Yeah, like yeah, it yeah. was, I was like, yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord. Yeah. It was you deep, can't imagine Yo. that. And this is before, like there's, there's no, you know, what is those, those, you, you bomb, like, like you go on the internet and you, like everybody meet somewhere. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 one of those flash mobs. Yeah, 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 yeah flash flash. Like, <laughs> No, there was no internet no, back no then. Internet. There's no cell phone. There's no nothing. It's just like, yo, it's like word of mouth. Like, yo, you going to the game. Yo, right. You're going to the game. You're going right. to the game. Right. Like, boom, people <laughs> on top of the buildings in the trees. See, like, yo, yo. Dr. James playing today. Like, yo, crazy. I'm going to the game. Right, that's <laughs> crazy. And it wasn't just Harlem. So people was telling me stories about coming from the Bronx, Queens, uh-huh. Brooklyn. And, you know, fortunately, a lot of the players and the stars were from these different places. So that's part of how the word traveled, but people would travel from all over. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think, you know, that's a testament. I really want to, to really put the call out to all Each One Teach One participants because there was a window, and we there were some great things done then, but imagine our power. Mm-hmm. Look at those people in the buildings and filling those seats for hours for years. Sometimes it wasn't a one-time heat. event. No. Yeah, water. yeah. your feet was burning when you, I played in Rucker Park in the, <laughs> in the summertime. Your feet burned. How you burn. get a bottle of water up on the top of the building? Like, oh, I'm going to go to that city. I'm going to go to the bottle of water, right. Get some water. Right. <laughs> you stayed up there and watched the game. Thirsty. Right. Right. Thirsty. <laughs> Can't lose my spot. No. I'm good. <laughs> but the that, water still be there. And that's the call. Like, <laughs> everybody needs to, to come home. We really asking everybody, anybody with an earshot, if this is online or streaming, you've got to, to check in. Yeah. This is we the call. You. We need you to, to connect so we can create this, this network that's been, we got guys who have been, you know, scorekeepers in the NBA for over 35 years. We have Olympians. We have Naismith Hall of Famers. We have uh, Assemblymen. We have senators. All these different people have been involved, and we're calling you. And people you know that have been a part of each one, teach one. Mm-hmm. Whether you are one of the guys that played on the teams, or you were one of the cheerleaders on the east side or on the west side, mm-hmm. and you had the dance competition. And when you're one of the young ladies from the 1975 
championship women's team who played. You know, we want to give homage to Yvette Washington, who passed away, but she coached Chris Mullen, Walter Berry, mm -hmm. Billy Goodwin, and the animal Richie Adams, Gary Springer, mm -hmm. Rory Grimes. She coached all these guys who were major players in the college scene. You know, we've had Mark Jackson playing each one, teach one games. We've had Ken Bannister, the animal. We've had Walter Berry. We've had Ed Pickney, different guys that are coaching Ross around. Strickland. You know, Ross Strickland, you know, has Jamal been a part of Kenny Smith, Jamal Mashburn. Crazy. Like, like, these are the people that we call them. Everybody come home. It's time. It's time to pay homage. We'll never have another 50 years, mm -hmm. and this is what it's about. Mm -hmm. Us coming home August 10th through the 13th. We're going to have some adult events on Thursday and Friday, mm -hmm. and then everybody is going to be in the park the 12th and the 13th. Mm -hmm. we, got, we have uh, programs coming from Queens, Brooklyn, Upstate, Jersey, we have everybody coming back. So this is what it's about and celebrating the, the each one teach one culture and legacy. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. And you know what? Shout out to my man, Coach George, because this is how I was able to link up with these good people right here. And Coach George came in and I hooked him up with the fresh Sean Kemp. And he was telling me about your dad. He was like, because your dad was getting awarded some award oh, yeah, down yeah. south. Yeah, yeah. He was going to the South Carolina Hall of Fame, yes. Athletic Hall of Fame. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so that was deep. Yes, that's, that's when I met Coach George. And, I, and, you know, he was telling me that he was involved with the, with the community board. And I was like, well, I want to be involved with the community too because – I have kids and I'm from the community. Yeah. You know, I may not be from, I feel like Harlem, I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan originally. God. You know, and before I moved up here, I lived in Atlanta and God. then I moved here to New York. But even though I lived in Atlanta long and I'm from Michigan, it seems like New York, you know, is where my life really got started. Well, you know what I'm saying? I had kids here, I got into my career here. Oh, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, yeah. I've, I've pretty much spent like the majority of my life here in New York. Absolutely. I moved away from Michigan when I was 17, moved up here when I was uh, 27. Okay. I'm about to be 42, so, so you, I'll be so 43. You live yeah. about your days in New yeah, York. Yeah, man. Well, it's, I, it's I a full circle ride because, yeah. you know, I don't know what it is about Harlem. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what's going on and w why is the center of a lot of things that happen with black people. But Langston Hughes said it best. He said, so goes it in Harlem, so goes it with the rest of black, of Ameri black America. <laughs> so we have to be people who, who treasure Harlem, who mm -hmm. value it, keep it intact, and allow people to see. But you know, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about George Ball. Mm -hmm. So George Ball is pretty much the, 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 the true legacy of Each One Teach One. Because he grew up in Each One Teach One, he worked in Each One Teach One, He's worked in each one, teach one free for almost 20 years. He, when I left to go to school in California, um, because I was like, oh, I grew up in this, I can't do it no more. <laughs> I was like, I need to do something else. George was there. George stood in and made sure the organization continued to flourish. Mm -hmm. They've developed college uh, tours. They've taken, they've taken over, I would say in the past 15 years, over 150 college tours with kids throughout the community to the surrounding HSBCUs and the local colleges. And they've done that on very little. You know, we've done a lot to now really try to set the organization up for the next 50 years. You know, and George is at the forefront of that as well as uh, the youngest uh, male McCullough, mm -hmm. Marvin McCullough. Uh, and, and these guys have stand, stood in the gap. They've all worked in the organization for years. I had been going to L.A. for 13 years. It's continued on, and we are, we are really committed mm -hmm. to making sure that it's an, a stellar organization that's not just around for 50 years, but has an impact for 50 right. years. And so we've right. been building up and trying to uh, really um, work with the, the current uh, board of directors, and they've been very uh, accepting and focused on how to permeate uh, the transitions that need to happen, as well as uh, fostering what are our goals, right. you know. So I think that's important. Uh, but I also think, you know, just guys like you, why I say it's full circle ride for you is because what you do here will resonate to out back out to Atlanta, back out to, to Michigan. And, you know, we are willing as an organization to set up more and more Each One Teach One sites and to show people how to start grassroots organizations because mm -hmm. it's needed.
whether it's basketball or film. You know, we're currently doing the Fatherhood Image Film Project, and the Fatherhood Image Film Festival funds that. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a festival, and films around fatherhood and things that are going on, and committed fathers like you. We have something going on on September 17th that is the Dad's Day Honors. It's going to be a great celebration between Harlem and the Bronx, mm -hmm. and we're going to, you know, collectively do stuff to honor dads, have them play games with their kids, you know, scalesies, you remember scalesies, hopscotch, mm -hmm. um, box ball, mm -hmm. and all the different things that we, we played hands-on before the technological yeah. age, but then we go to board games. Then from board games, we go to PlayStation. From PlayStation, we go to VR, and so we're going to really connect dads with their kids, mm -hmm honor some dads on that day, fly drones, do race, RC race cars. Nice. It's going to be a great day. <laughs> so, nice. you know, we had a great commitment of, uh, from the Bruckner building to be able to commit to using a 20,000 foot square space, square foot space. Uh, and we have each one teach one park on the other side of the bridge. So it's oh, going to be like nice. a march. It's going nice. to be really cool. You know, each one teach one is committed. And each one teach one is at the forefront of the, the foundation of the Fatherhood Image Film Festival. And that's, you know, that's who's at the helm. So, you know, there's a lot to be done, but as you know, we're going to link up and mm -hmm. you're going to do some training mm -hmm. on uh, grooming and mm -hmm. helping young men to, to know Definitely. that, you know, and that's, that's taking care of the community. Mm -hmm. That's what each one teach one is. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and it's, it's very important. It's like, I ha I've been an uncle since I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. So I've been that's, raising kids, you know what I'm saying? Where it comes from. Like, you know, my, my, my oldest nephew, you know, we, we kick it. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'd be forgetting he my nephew. Right. I'd be like feeling like, you know, this is my brother or right, something, right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So it's it's very important to me, you know, well, uh, especially with a lot of the things that the youth are going through nowadays and yeah. you know, a lot of the things that they see, a lot of the things that they see people doing or hear, you know, and uh, and, and I was just talking to um to my son's mother. And we were, uh, and I was telling, and I was telling her, I was like, man, I was like, you know, because they were kind of getting kind of crazy. They're boys, yeah. six and nine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, we got to nip all this in the bud right mm -hmm. now, right. because I was like, I'd rather I get on their butt right now for somebody else yeah. to get on their butt later. Right. Right. So, you know, nip it in the bud. And, yeah. you know, I've been raising, you know, kids, like I said, since I was seven. And I really enjoy giving back. That's why I was excited to meet Coach George. And that's why I was excited to come and link up and start coming to the meetings. And that's why I'm excited about, you know, being involved with this Each One Teach One. And that's why we down here doing this TV Absolutely. show. And that's why I'm ready to keep on progressing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, There's more. And, you know, more to do. Just bringing, just bringing more people in and, you know, realizing, people, this is your community. Yeah. That's what that's what you have to understand. This is your community. Your community is only going to be as good as you are. You need to come out. You need to put your best into it. Anything, everything, you know, because this is what is going to keep us connected as right. far as our our culture, as far mm -hmm. as our our history. Um, like Coach George was telling me real quick, so I don't run out of time. The uh, old bus, the bus garage depot right over there on 121st yes. is a sacred African. Burial ground. ground. Right. They're going to tear it down. They're going to build a memoriam. Mm -hmm. But also across the street, he was telling me about like a new wasteland field that they're going to build. And the, compared to the one downtown, to where it was about two hundred million spent on it, mm -hmm. you know, to this one that's going to be in Harlem, in the urban area, and right across right. from this sacred place, right. you know, to only spend like two million on it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like of an insult. That's kind of like you just throwing up some walls and putting the garbage in to just contain the smell, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are the things that we have to be aware about in our community. Absolutely. You know, so we can go out and we can, you know, we, we, we can make these decisions and, and make the right votes and make the right changes because we, a, after it's done, we can't do nothing about it. You, you can't, you, if you know what's going on, you come out, you make the change, you vote no, you stay involved in your community, you know what's going on. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait to complain later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't even complain at all. Just take action. You know what I'm saying? That's that's pretty much what you got to do. We were talking about that earlier today. Me and him was getting into a, a real intense conversation about it. And, I, you know, and I, it's not that we disagree at all, you know, and he was saying some very important things. You want to tell him about what you were talking about? Because... Oh we forgot. <laughs> He's teasing. No, I mean, virtually. So what he was saying was, he was talking about how, you know, there was a time in which the properties that are around that people are buying up 
were available. Mm -hmm. And people spent their money doing a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And we have to be cognizant. You know, and I talked more about, you know, something I'm going to meet with Adriano Espriat's uh, office with, and that's the congressman that replaced Charles Rangel, mm -hmm. with about, you know, what are the stop gaps that we could put in place in order to prevent all this gentrification from displacing all these other people. Mm -hmm. You can't, do, you know, just like there's a referendum and moratoriums on liquor stores and how many you can put there, there has to be a, a, a gap in which you cut off all of this, you know, uh, rent hikes and all the property values going up where mm -hmm. you have so many people to being displaced because that's not care for the people. Right. So, yeah, you have to respect the businessmen who have money to be able to spend that, but you can't allow their ability to spend to override the people who are there and... Like D said, we should be buying up the properties, getting our money together and purchasing what's still available because there's basketball players, mm -hmm. actors, mm -hmm. producers, directors, all these people that could have a stake in Harlem mm -hmm. to keep Harlem Harlem. We're not changing Harlem to Soha. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're right. It's Harlem. <laughs> it's going to stay Harlem. You're not, right. you're not wiping, us out, wiping us out. Right. You're not forgetting us. Right. Right? So we're going to make sure that it stays that way, and that's what this is about. Exactly. Man, this has been great. Go ahead and give me your information yes. to where they can find out about each one, teach one, get in touch with you if they want to be involved. Hit us up at hpifilms.com, or you can do National Association of Each One, Teach One, INC forward slash so it's www and you don't need a dot com or anything but search each one teach one hit us up on twitter hit us up on instagram and facebook on facebook you can search hpi films or rucker 50 uh and same for uh rucker 50 and uh, each one teach one all have sites we also have a new the new each one teach one yeah each one teach one is uh what's it uh, each one teach one and inc each one teach one INC uh, on Instagram. Instagram and hash well not hashtag just Rucker 50 um, on Instagram Rucker 50 <coughs> so check it out and check out the documentary yeah. on check Rucker 50 out. we're actually going to be shooting each one teach one 50 yeah, too because it's going to be a lot of stars Ooh. in people who are impacted so check us out when you get an opportunity on Netflix hashtag Rucker 50 and look out for a free screening of hashtag Rucker 50 at Rucker Park yep during uh, uh, August 13th man yeah. Fellas, um, thank you very much. Bob, Daryl, oh, man, thank this you. this was this was thank definitely you. a wonderful interview. If if you didn't like this interview, then you don't like phenomenal television. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Or exceptional information. Absolutely. This was this was absolutely you know something that I was looking forward to. I was like, man, I was like, we really got to do this. Yeah. I'm gonna put this show on a couple times before we we might even shoot another one. Hey, you know, we gonna August. have some. some oh, give them the dates real quick. Give them the dates real August quick. August 10th through the 13th. But look for former NBA players who are each yeah. one teach one participants on guy on the Hubert Guy Show. Yes, sir. <laughs> and once again, I thank you for joining me. You were a guy with the actor's cut. And hit me up on Facebook, Handsome Good Grooming, Instagram, Handsome Good Grooming. And watch the show every Wednesday at 5. Holla at your boy. Peace. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. That was tight. Yeah. Yeah. Handsome yeah. Grooming, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm 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 moving to a different town too. Okay, where you going? I'm probably gonna go to uh